Yay, Shalom, this is your brother Yuanathan. All right, first and foremost, I want to give all praises to the Most High. Yahweh, Bahashem. Yahweh Shai, Bahashem. Rekah HaKwadash, I want to give double honors to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone. Of course, the bishops I want to say Shalom to all the brothers, of course, the few sisters who are pursuing this truth and sincerity. May the blessing of election be upon your house. Got this question the other day, um, so I figured I'd do it here before I go to sleep. Have to get up and go to work, huh? Uh, the question was this. Um, what day exactly is uh, Passover celebrated? Um, this wasn't the last time the Israelites were enslaved, was it? Talking about the, the captivity in Egypt. Does the Bible refer to this group of people as the Israelites? Okay, so we're going to answer these questions uh, pretty briefly. They're not really... Uh, Super deep questions at all. Um, the first question, part of the question was, uh, what is the exact day the Passover is celebrated? So I'll say this. Um, the way our forefathers told time is completely different than how they tell time today. The way they tell time today um, is according to the Gregorian calendar. All right. But the way our forefathers told time was the way the Lord commanded them to tell time. And we'll go to Genesis, the uh, the first chapter here. And I believe it is the uh, 14th verse. Just bear with me while the um, phone loads up. So this is Genesis 1 and 14. All right, it says, And God said, Let there be light in the firmament of the heaven to divide the day from the night, and let there be, let them be for signs and for seasons and for days and for years. So the stars, the, the, the moon, okay, primarily we'll focus on the moon here. The word moon even goes back to the word month. Actually, let's go look up that word moon really quick here. We'll go to the Edom online and look up the word moon. Right now, we go look at that word moon. It says heavenly body, which revolves about the earth monthly. OK, so the way we tell the differences in the months. All right. We would do it by the new moon. All right. So whenever there's a new moon, that's the beginning of a new month. All right. And that day that that new moon came. Every week that day. So say it came in on a Tuesday night. So not only is that Tuesday night the beginning of a new month, Tuesday night for the rest of the month until there's another new moon, sundown to sundown will be the Sabbath day for that month. Okay, so shoot, I'll just run down um example. Let's go to Exodus 12 because she talked asked about Passover, right? Exodus 12 and 2, it says, this month shall be unto you. The beginning of months, it shall be the first month of the year to you, not everybody else, because they had their own things going on. Speak ye unto all the congregation of Israel. Okay, so the Lord is dealing with the nation of Israel. This is the family of people that the laws and the, the standard in the Bible, this is the people that he gave that unto. He didn't give it to everybody. All right, saying, in the tenth day of this month, they shall take to them every man a lamb according to the house of their fathers, a lamb for an house. So Exodus 12, of course, is a chapter where it gives you the instructions on how to keep the Passover. But we go to Deuteronomy 16 and 1. It says this as well. Observe the month of Abib and keep the Passover unto the Lord thy God. For in the month of Abib, the Lord thy God brought thee forth out of the Egypt by night. So the month of Abib would be you know, when everything starts to grow, it's springtime. So when everything starts to grow again, you know, March, April. Um, if you go on my page and you type a GMS Yuan Passover, the past three Passovers will be up, loaded, and you can check them all out. All right, now let's go to Isaiah 66 and 23. It says, and it shall come to pass that from one new moon. So here's, we looked at the word moon for a reason here. So the new moon is when you can't see the moon in the sky, right? 
So from one new moon to another, and from one Sabbath to another, and it's the same thing, new moon and the Sabbath, same thing. And from one Sabbath to another, shall all flesh come to worship before me, saith the Lord. Right, so that's how you tell the Sabbath. You don't tell the Sabbath by just saying, oh, it's Friday sundown or Saturday sundown. No, our forefathers were commanded to discern the times and seasons by the lights placed in the firmament, and the moon would be the light that we use to discern the months, the Sabbath days, okay, to tell time. Okay, Ezekiel 46 and 3, let's go there. It says, Likewise, the people of the land shall worship at the door of this gate before the Lord in the Sabbaths and in the new moon. So often a time when you see the scriptures mention, mention Sabbath, it'll mention new moon as well because they're the same thing. All right, let's go to Amos 8 and 5, and, and we'll I'll just round out this point about the new moon, what it, how it's used. All right. It says, saying, when will the, it's Amos 8 and 5, by the way, KJV, saying, when will the new moon be gone that we may sell corn and the Sabbath day that we may set forth wheat because we're not supposed to work on a Sabbath, right? Okay, and that's not something everybody here on this side in this captivity can keep perfect. But you strive to if you can. Okay, because some people, d depending on particular days, whatever day the new moon fell on, if it's a Wednesday sundown, Thursday sundown, and you got to work, you know, you can't be like, I'm not coming in because it's Saturday. They're going to let your ass go. You're not going to have, you're not going to be able to pay your rent. You're not going to be able to, you know. But um, there's certain things we can keep perfect. There's some, thing, some things we can't, you know. But there is going to be something that comes up that we're all going to have to resist regardless of the consequences, all right? And that's the MOTB, the mark of the beast, spoken of in Revelation um, 13, 16. Let me see here. Double check what I'm saying here. Yeah, Revelation 13, 16. All right, so now we, we Abarat is I, hopefully, you got to understand on New Moon and the Sabbath. Just brought out a bunch of quick precepts to kind of get you started on that path. Now, when it, yeah, when is it celebrated? So we, 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 break that, we broke that down. Uh, we went to Deuteronomy, the month of a bead. All right. I'm going to read it one more time just to round the point home. Deuteronomy 16 and 1. Observe the month of Abib and keep the Passover unto the Lord thy God. For in the month of Abib, the Lord thy God brought thee forth out of Egypt by night. Now, we can go look up this word here in Deuteronomy um, 16 and 1, right? And it'll give us a little background on it. So, let's go look up Abib. So even here, when you look it up, it'll give you March or April, right? But often the time, we got to go by the new moons and we'll say, okay, this is this month. And we'll we have brothers that are on it. And when that time of year comes around, you know, we all make sure everybody knows the exact date when that time of year comes around in which we keep it. Okay, because, we, again, we can't go by the Gregorian calendar. We got to go by the new moons and when they've come in for that year. So it gets calculated. And if you're watching videos and you're tapped in, the date is made known to everybody. The same way the Sabbaths are made known unto everybody. Like tonight, it's a Saturday night. The Sabbath uh, just um, ended. So yeah, the Sabbath just ended. Um, let me see here. I believe if you go to Apostle Ramlop's channel, he always actually puts up the Sabbaths as they come in. So right now, July 5th, Friday evening to Saturday evening, that was when the new moon came in. So the Sabbath for this month of July, so to speak, I'm going to do these air quotes when I say July, 
Um, it'll be Friday evening to Saturday evening. Previously, June 5th, it was Wednesday evening to Thursday evening. And in the month of May, it was Tuesday evening to Wednesday evening. So it doesn't always fall on the same days. All right, so that's that. Now, when was the last time? I'm going back to the question I'm reading because it was a three-part question, right? Yeah, the Israelites went into multiple captivities, and I'll just kind of run down, you know, the captivities we went into. Now, of course, you got... In Daniel 7, you got the major captivities that we went into, but we went into more than just the, uh, the kingdoms mentioned in um, Daniel 7. First would be uh, the Egyptian captivity, and you can read about that in Genesis 37 through 50 and Exodus 1 through 14. All right, and then we, were, we were in slavery in Egypt for 400 years before, you know, the Exodus took place under Moses, the Lord using Moses. Um, now, we were in the land of Israel. You can read about this in Judges. It was always different um, Canaanite and Philistine oppressions going on during that time. Okay, so like minor little oppression, you know, compared to like Egypt and Assyrian. Oh, yeah, and the Assyrian captivity. You can read about the Assyrian captivity in like Second Kings 17th chapter, First Chronicles, the fifth chapter. And it uh, was that like. Let me look it up here. Go ahead. Um, seven, seven twenty-two B.C. The Northern Kingdom went into the Assyrian captivity. That wasn't all twelve tribes. That wasn't the so-called blacks that went into the Assyrian captivity. That was the Northern Kingdom. So the Latino Native American people, they went into that captivity. Okay. And that's where we get a lot of the Assyrian Hebrew, the Assyrian characters. The, the Southern Kingdom never used those characters, by the way. Um, then after that, you got the, what, the Babylonian captivity. You can read about that in 2 Kings 24th, 25th chapter, Jeremiah the 29th chapter, Daniel, 12, uh, Daniel 1. Um, that's 586 B.C. approximately. So the Southern Kingdom, all right, which Judah, you know, was conquered by the Babylonian Empire. And Jerusalem, uh, the first temple was destroyed. Yeah, many Jews were exiled to uh, the ancient Babylon. Then after that, you have the Persian period, which was uh, the prophets Ezra and Nehemiah. Okay, they were in that captivity. They were prophesying during that time. So after the fall of Babylon to the Persian Empire, that was like, what, 539? Okay, 40, 50 years after the, the Babylonians. Uh, many Jews returned to Judah under the decree of Cyrus. And you can read about that in, uh, I think it's Daniel, the fifth chapter. All right. And then you have what the Greeks after that, which is a very important captivity. You had a lot of uh, Hellenized Jews, meaning Greek speaking Jews. So you can read about the conquest of Alexander the Great in the Bible. But, you know, if you have a Bible that is missing the Apocrypha, then you can't get that history. You're missing hundreds of years of history. All right. But uh, you can read about Alexander and the Hasmonean dynasty, uh, the Jews experience. Uh, during the Greek the Greek ruling, uh, and that's how you get the story of the Maccabees, right? The Maccabean revolts in 167 uh, through 160 BC against the Seleucid Empire. So there are a lot of history during that time. And you have the Roman occupation, all right? This is when Yahweh Shah was on the scene, who the world ignorantly calls Jesus, beginning in what is like uh, 63 BC, where they took control of Judea. Uh, and then you got the this, uh, second temple in 70, uh, 70 AD, that revolt that took place, okay, where, where Jerusalem was completely um, seized and taken over and they were scattered out of the land, all right, all the way up until this point, the last captivity, you had a lot of our people flee into the western coast of Africa and from there we were taken into the transatlantic slave trade as prophesied going into slavery on ships um, over here into America so this is the last captivity we're in and this place is likened pursuing to Revelation 11 and 7 this place is likened unto Egypt and this is where that second exodus is going to take place and we go to Jeremiah the 15th chapter here 
I know I'm kind of, I'm zipping through a bunch, but uh, I'm trying to get through it for you. All right, let's go to Jeremiah. All right, um, bear with me real quick while I pull it up. Because the, this captivity that we're going to be delivered out of here in America is going to outdo the captivity, the exodus, the deliverance from Egypt, which was a great deliverance. Okay, all the all the nations of the world have a, a reference to that story. Um, this is in, uh, where is it? Yeah, Jeremiah 16th chapter, right? So, uh, the deliverance that's going to take place here is going to outdo that one. And the Lord did amazing things in Egypt. He made complete darkness. He turned the water to blood. All the gods that they worshipped in Egypt, like they had the sun god, they had the god of the water, they had the god of agriculture. The Lord showed that he had dominion over those things and not those false idols that they worshipped in that land. He showed that he had control over the water. He had control over the fish. He had control over the, the sun. He had control over all these things, over life and death. He killed the firstborns. He showed completely that he stands alone as the master of the universe. And then he delivered us out of that. You understand? So this Jeremiah 16 and 14, it says, Therefore, behold, the days come, saith the Lord, that it shall no more be said, the Lord liveth that brought up the children of Israel out of the land of Egypt. So what he's saying here is, people aren't going to talk about the deliverance from Egypt anymore. They're going to talk about something else. And what is it? But the Lord liveth that brought up the children of Israel from the land of the north. That's talking about Babylon, the great mystery Babylon, which is where we are now. The bulk of Israel is in captivity in America. And from all the lands where he had driven them, and I will bring them again into, the, to, into their land that I gave unto their fathers. So there's going to be a deliverance that outdoes the deliverance in Egypt. So when we keep Passover in the kingdom, they're going to talk about the deliverance from America. Isn't that something? So, you know, um, I kind of brushed briefly over everything and I hope, you know, it's edifying. This could be like a whole class or our lesson, but it's 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 really quite simple. You know what I mean? Um, you know, I brought this out of your questions were answered. And everything was comprehended and it was edifying. Um, I think I answered all the questions I'm going to rehash. When this Passover celebrated, we talked about that. We went over it. Uh, the month of Abib, which would be April or March, and that's calculated uh, as we as the Sabbaths come in and we, and we push that date out to everybody when the time comes. Um, and so, of course, this wasn't the last time the Israelites were enslaved. We went through all the different captivities and the, the dates and gave dates and chapters where you could read about it. Um, and of course, this book is written to the nation of Israel. The whole Bible pertains unto us. OK, we, let's let's go. To, let's go in the New Testament. Right. Where a lot of people say, no, it's written for everybody in the New Testament. Let's go there. Let's go to the ninth chapter. And let's check something out. And this is, this is just a. A precept that's kind of straight and to the point and easy to understand. And this is Romans 9. And I'm going to just jump to verse 3. And I'm going to read it in the NLT. All right. It says, for my people, my Jewish. And now, Jewish is a word that's modern and made up. It's not, Jewish means to be like a Jew. Notice, I'm just going to read it how it should be written. For my people, the Jews, brothers and sisters, I will be willing to be forever cursed, cut off from the Mashiach, the anointed one, which is talking about Yahweh Shai, who the world eagerly calls Jesus. If that would save them, they are the people of Israel. It's verse four. Chosen to be God's adopted children. God revealed his glory to them. He made covenants with an S. In the KJV, it's covenants too, meaning the old covenant and the new covenant pertains unto this family of people. He made covenants with them and gave them his law. And we know in order to even show or reciprocate love to the Lord, you have to be obedient to the standard that he set, which is his law. And he only gave his law to the children of Israel. So the only people that even love the Lord back 
would be those of this bloodline of this family because he gave it that standard unto them. Okay. He made covenants with them and gave them his law. He gave them the privilege of worshiping him. So not even everybody has the privilege of even worshiping him and receiving his wonderful promises, at least not yet. In the kingdom, everybody's going to have to worship Yahweh. But right now, <laughs> it only pertains to this family of people. All right. Verse five, Abraham, Isaac and Jacob. So, again, it tracks that line. Now, Abraham had other sons outside of Isaac. But the Lord is dealing with the line that continues and trickles down through Abraham, Isaac and Jacob. And Jacob's name was changed to Israel. And that's how you get the 12 tribes of Israel. All right. Abraham, Isaac and Jacob are their ancestors. And the Mashiach himself was an Israelite as far as his hunt, as his human nature is concerned. And he is God, meaning he, he, was, he was on one accord with the Most High. But he was the first spirit the Most High ever created. So the Lord created Yahweh Shai. And then after that, he delegated everything else unto him. And we did a whole lesson on Genesis, the first chapter, because it's much deeper than people think. They, they see that word God there, and they think it's talking about the actual Most High. When a lot of times it's not. It's talking about the Elohim meaning the powers, those, he's talking about Yahweh Shai and the angels that were with him, okay? But uh, let's continue on, uh, one thing at a time. The one who rules over everything and is worthy of eternal praise. Now, I'm going to read that verse 4 and 5, Romans 9, 4 and 5 in the KJV, all right? Who are the Israelites to whom pertain of the adoption and the glory and the covenants and the giving of the law and the service of God? And the promises, the promises, whose are the fathers and of whom concerning the flesh, the Mashiach came, who is over all God bless forever. Amen. All right. The KJV is the best version to read. But a lot of times in the NLT or the GNT, you could you could find things. Some precepts can be made easy to understand, but I wouldn't da dabble into those other versions until I've. Until, you, you know, kind of matured in the spirit and, you know, you could. Spit out the bones because some things in those other versions can be misleading. And even in the KJV, there's often plenty of time where you got to look up the words to really understand what's being said. All right. So Abarat's adolescent was edifying. I want to give all praises once more to Yahweh, Bahashim, Yahweh Shai, Bahashim, Rekah HaKodash. I want to give double honors to apostles and the elders of Great Millstone. I want to say Shalom to all the brothers, of course, the few sisters who are pursuing this truth in sincerity. May the blessing of election be upon your house. Shalom.